And today's video is sponsored by Yehu. Yehu is an online professional learning platform that helps anyone to get started with learning anything that has to do with digital art and at the same time perfect their skills and it is totally dedicated at providing users with excellent and high quality tutorials and if you want to learn anything from zbrush maya houdini cinema 4d blender and so on you need to go ahead and check out this site presently they do have an amazing blender tutorial that teaches everything that you need to know that has to do with animation and simulation this course is available and if you're trying to get into games creating characters rigging cloth simulation basic blueprint for unreal engine at the same time you're thinking about how you can learn everything that has to do with material creation all of these are packed into one gigantic course that you can lay your hands on and get right now so if you're trying to get into blender and unreal engine this course is here for you and there is a ten dollar coupon code down in the description that you can claim right now and use this to get this course and for anyone who's trying to skill up or probably get some very cool stuff happening for them go yehu hey what's up guys and welcome back to ask nk so today we're doing a community requested video and this has been one of the videos that you guys have been asking for a very long time this has to do with how you can sort of disintegrate or maybe make an object that is animated disappear by simply using node and the model which we're going to get is from mixamo so just in case you don't know mixamo is where you can get free characters free motions and you can also auto rig your characters directly there and use them totally for free so with that said, I'm going to select this character, get this motion, download this, and we're going to launch this directly into Blender. So with Blender open right now, I would simply go over to file, then go over to import, import the FBX. And with this FBX, I'm going to simply select this, the flying kick. So we'll bring in the flying kick right here. And with this done, oh, we need to get rid of the default cube. Sorry, boo. So we have the default cube out of the way. And if we press the playback, we can see that we have, ooh, that, that's a lovely kick right there. Cool. So we have this kick going on. So with this kick here, what we would like to do now is we wouldn't like to see all of this, which is the joints. And the next thing is with all of this here, if you go through and take out all the overlays at the same time, you're losing some stuff, which you might probably want to see. Of course, this would make sense, but this is also another good way of actually hiding things. So what I can do is simply select the amateur, select and create a brand new layer. Let's just make sure we have a new layer. And within that layer, I'm just going to make sure I have that one visible. Go back to the very first view layer and turn this off. Of course, you can still turn this off. You know, you just want to be organized. And that's why we're doing that right now. So with this done, the next thing I would like to do is raise this all the way up. Select here and switch over to shader oh of course and in case you haven't seen soccer it's a video which we did that has to do with procedural modeling awesome awesome stuff do check it out with the shader graph here the next thing which we want to do is simply select the object now once we do select the object you would notice that we have you know the materials right here now with this material here you can literally do a whole lot of things with this of course but the whole idea for today's video is how you can actually make this thing disappear so you also notice that we have one and we also have the second one here you can choose to merge these things together bring them in as alembic and then select them individually and assign different materials to different parts so how do we actually start making this very interesting stuff First things first, I'll go ahead and create Suzanne the monkey. Let's simply use her as an example so that we can get good with the other things as we proceed. I'm subdividing by hitting Ctrl 2 and I'm also pressing S on the keyboard just to scale this down. With this selected, I'm going to go over to the amateur and within the amateur, you'll notice we have the beta surface, which I'm going to make sure I don't see and also the beta joint, which I'm also going to make sure that we don't see. Now, the reason why we're using Suzanne is so that we can get the exact setup that we want then we can proceed to use exactly the same setup to implement the change across every other thing so first things first we're going to create a brand new shader this is going to be for susan right now and with this here i would want to throw a mix now the idea of mixing things together is we want these to be transparent as we actually slide across and that is why we want to add a mix shader so how do we add this if you hold down shift and a you bring this out you type the word mix and you'll be able to have a mix shader there is a mix shader and there is also the normal mix rgb this has to do with textures and in case you want to play with colors you want to mix colors together 
this is what you should use so with this here i can simply wire this right there and also hold on control right click and get this out of the way now the next shader which i would like to mix is transparency now the whole idea is i would like to switch between the main color to the transparent color and if you have a textured model that has this then it's also very easy for you to get this going so i will do this right here and get transparent so I'm going to get the transparent thingy and load this right here. Now with this loaded up, if I simply switch over to the shaded, you can start noticing that if I move this all the way back and forth, we, you know, literally don't see anything. Now the reason why we don't see anything while we're working with Eevee is because our blending mode is set to opaque. And right now we need to set it to alpha hashed. And once we do that and we simply, you know, flip back and forth, you can see this becomes transparent and this becomes visible so if you're trying to get that animated model to become transparent at the end of the day this is also something that you can simply use so with this here i'm just going to set this to 0.5 you can see that half of this belongs to the uh principal shader half of this belongs to the transparency so with this we need to control the tra transparency right we need to control the transparency and controlling the transparency has to do with an object uh, a texture something that has just black and white now the whole idea for a black and white texture or a black and white node is because we want to switch from zero to one which is the factor so we need something that's either totally zero or totally one and if you're working with a black and white texture this is exactly what you can do with that so for this we need to control this factor and there is no better thing to actually give you so much control than a ramp so right now we can simply use a ramp now with this ramp here you would notice we're going to set this as simple linear and I will con you know connect the color over to fractal and once I do that if I simply move this down you can see we can easily now control this now your first question is why are you using this I mean you can still you know just go ahead and do that but then the beauty about making this thing transparent is not the fact that you can just go from black and white but you know the whole you know I don't know the whole beauty when you see the noise when everything just seems to kind of blend and you can see some parts disappear while other parts stay yeah that is one of the beauties and that is why we're using all of this so I'm just gonna set this one right here and another thing which you would notice is right here we still have exactly the same factor now the whole idea for this other one is just in case you don't feel comfortable using this or if you want to still use something to control how this particular factor would actually behave then we can simply now throw in that noise so we have this noise texture right here which we can use you can use any of these noise textures as they are totally fine actually let's go ahead and try out with the verona noise and with this i can simply lock this over to the factor now if i lock this in you can now see that we have this beautiful stuff well one more thing that you need to do is in case you're getting some weird results you may want to come through and also check back face calling as this is also going to take out the other parts all right so if you're also having some weird results and you're just wishing why can't i see the back then confirm if this is turned off and then you might have to turn this back on so now you have something this pretty now with this here you can simply do so many other things you can scale this down you can scale this up you can simply have total control of all of this but with this, I would like to also throw in a noise because I don't really like this particular one. And I'm just going to lock this right there. Select this particular noise that we have here, which we don't like, and press the delete key to get rid of it. This gives us those, you know, uh, lovely looking edges. And this is one of the main reasons why I would prefer to go with this one every day, any day. So with this here, I'll set this to 4D because we have way more stuff to work with. And then I'm going to simply select this. And because we've already throw in the Wrangler node, I would hit Control T on the keyboard so I can simply get the mapping here. Now for this mapping, there are certain things which I would like to map. This might take a time or, your, you know, this might take a toll on your PC, depending on, you know, what version of Blender you're running at the point. So I'm just going to be within the shader so that we can get this one really quick. I'm going to go from objects and connect this to location and then select this to connect it to rotation. Now, the reason why I'm connecting these two is I would like to, all right, I would like to simply get the object coordinate and control the location. I would like to get this particular object, all right? I'm going to load an object here very soon so I can show you. So the coordinates coming from this object is what I want to use to control the location and the rotation 
off the noise and since this noise controls this color ramp and this color ramp controls this mixed shader that controls the transparency and the principal shader and then every single thing that we get as a final output will be dependent on the location of this this would end up controlling every other thing all right so with this here i would also go through and throw in another mix now the reason why i want to throw in another mix right now is there are certain you know uh stuff which i would like to also add more like the gradient okay so for this now i'm going to simply hit shift and a and get a gradient so let's throw in that gradient texture right there and for this this is where the rgb mix kind of come into play so this is already a texture this is already another texture so we need to mix these two textures together all right so with this now i will also want to grab this vector now there are certain you know beautiful stuff that you can always go ahead and do and one of these things is explore try and explore these things as much as you can and i'm also going to show you what i mean by that so if i simply connect this right here and jump back to where we have our shaded let's save this so that you know blender doesn't crash and if we simply you know switch over to shaded you can start noticing that we're having this lovely thing now the scale still controls the scale you can see that there the details still controls the amount of details we can see let's simply go right there this on its own controls the width so you can also see that going and we also have this beautiful distortion so if you want to add all of those magical distortion effects yeah you can get this one going of course you might also want to link this up so just in case you don't find this comfortable or maybe you want this to be controlled by this vector yeah you can always go in there and, and, and mix these things this is totally up to you and you can make all of these decisions yourself and so with this done you can also see that at this point we can now simply jump back so i'm just going to go all the way back and now you can see we now have this value being controlled by the mapping so from this part now you can change this to anything you want all right now you set to point you can go ahead and set this to texture and you're going to get a different result probably maybe this is what you're looking for you can simply you know change this and get a good result something like that all right so yeah you can choose to get something like this or you can set this to vector and of course blender has to go through and calculate all of these things because we're kind of throwing in a whole lot of things to this right now and you can also get a result looking like this so depending on what you're trying to make i'm just going to go back and set this so depending on what you're trying to make you can set this to any of these things right here at the same time you can choose to play with any of the types of noise that you have here so that you can also get some sort of cool effects weird effects just have fun playing with these things as they will definitely make your day so i'm just going to set this back to the previous one and right here is where i would need to launch in some stuff so from here i'm going to simply select the empty click here to get a simple plane and click back on the monkey the next thing to do is simply either click right here and select the object or you can simply use the eyedropper and it's pretty cool to see you know we now have this eyedropper tool in blender i can simply use this and select this empty and once i select that you notice we have this empty right here now it's only a matter of selecting the empty that i want you know go over to where i want things to be and i can simply use this to control that effect so at this point you can also choose to you know select this and you can make some pretty cool rotation and you can have this beautiful stuff going for you really really interesting next thing you want to do is simply select this and you remember how we talked about the scale earlier you might want to dial the scale a little bit upwards so you can have even way more options of things you can do and with this i'm just going to simply rotate this across okay so with all of these features done you might want to animate this and this is totally up to you you might want to animate this to reveal something like that pretty cool you might want to get that one going at the same time if you're trying to dial up the kind or you know the amount of transparency that you might want to get you can still simply go over to the slider and you can get this one happening right here so you have almost all of the controls that you want if grouping is what you want to do so that you can launch this out you can also proceed to do that but for this case since we already have our setup i'm just going to simply move this all the way to that part select this and select this other one and simply hit the word copy now once i copy this by hitting ctrl c i can now go in take this one out remember we still have this right here and then i can bring out 
these two objects now with these two objects selected i'm just going to go back and select this first one Control v this and with this here it's quite simple to you know bring this all the way back and then just rewire this right here and rewire this right about here and there we have that going then next thing which we need to do is select the other one which is going to be the next one that has to do with the beta joint and control v this right there and with this done i would also go ahead and rewire this right there and then i would also rewire this other one right here okay pretty cool so with all of this done it is now easier for us to simply go in and pick up this particular object and i can use this object to change the feeling that we're having here and for this to each of them that i'm going to select i need to come down here and make sure i have this set to alpha hashed so you can see that there and then i have to go over to the next one and also do the same thing right there so i'm also going to select the next one and come here and set this to alpha hashed so once you have all of these things done blender is going to go through calculate all of them and at this point you now have yourself this particular object that you can use to slide in and slide out so if you want to change the colors of course you can simply go back and make changes to the color so for example Within here, I would like to make changes and change this to something bluish, which is cool. And then I can also go over to the joints and maybe change this to something, uh, maybe something like that. Maybe we should simply make this white. I think white might look good, something like this. So we can also choose to do something like that. And to every single time, we can simply go in and make uh, an animation to this and also animate this as they simply travel across. And once this is done, you can simply go ahead and animate the handle. So I can simply have this handle and proceed to animate this. And this would actually work pretty fine. And if you're having issues about the scale not matching the whole object, you can for sure simply go ahead and increase the amount of scale that you have for this. And on the other hand, you can also go ahead and make changes right here so you can also make changes right here so that you can even have way more visibility for something like this if you're taking a look at a textured object that has various textures you can simply create the mapping and also the texture coordinates for that one and link all of the materials to one texture coordinate so you don't have to copy these things over and over i'm going to keep a link in the description where you can find this so in case you want to play with it you want to tweak it you want to have fun playing with this you, you know you want to experiment with it you can tweak totally have these ones and do whatever you want to do with them so this is definitely about it i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section and of course if you learned anything from this video or you like this video you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace